11 years ago, I wanted to get into drones. Started building my own, I learned to solder, flash some ESCs, program PID settings, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Unfortunately, at the time, I tried acro mode and I was like, this is way too hard. So I just went with auto level and kind of like never looked back. Let's fast forward, introduce Potato Jet. If you're not familiar, I highly recommend going and checking out his main channel and his secondary channel, Potato Jet, or Gene, started getting into FPV, which is first person video, a year, maybe a little longer, might be more than that, but he started getting into it. That really inspired me to give it a try. Now, FPV gives you a first person view from the drone, and if you throw on some goggles, then you're gonna get this really immersive flight experience. I didn't know exactly where to start, and then DJI released the Avada. I was considering building my own FPV drone. I still want to, but to get started, DJI just had the total package ready to fly with amazing HD first person video piped into these smaller goggles that they have now. And then let's fast forward even to today, cause I'm a few months behind. I've never flown any drone manually. I've flown plenty of hours on custom and DJI drones where I can mash the sticks and get this like cinematic footage, but I've never mastered the manual or acro flight. Now what's the difference in auto level and this manual or acro flight? DJI has cornered the market, of course. So let me clear a few things up. DJI's normal and sport modes those are both using back in the day, if you were building your own drones, you would call auto level. You push a stick in a direction, the drone moves in that direction, you let go of the stick, the drone stops, and then levels itself back out and just kind of sits there. If you get in trouble, you can just let go of the sticks and the drone will sit there being held in place by sensors and GPS and whatnot, and it'll just stay there. This way of flying drones makes it incredibly accessible and opens the hobby to basically everybody. It is awesome i love that drones actually have this capability and they can do all these awesome things and it makes getting amazing pictures and videos super easy dci has even added obstacle avoidance sensors to make this type of flying even safer and easier let's talk about acro mode or as dji calls it manual mode same thing we'll just interchange those words probably it's helpful to understand your typical four channels of input on most drones you're gonna have the throttle and the yaw on one of the sticks and then the pitch and the roll on the other stick in manual mode the drone will require constant manual controller input to stay in the air and not crash you're required to give throttle input to keep the drone hovering if you give an input for the drone to pitch or roll the drone will continue that movement until you stop giving the input but it will not automatically return to level. This form of flight is really challenging to say the least. So to get started, I went to the DJI site, started shopping for the Avada, and unfortunately the drone is sold with a motion controller, which I'll get more into. It's a non-traditional way and a more intuitive way to fly as DJI claims. If you wanna get newer goggles, the goggles 2 not the goggles v2 as well as the traditional fpv controller the dji's insurance which i definitely recommend for a beginner like myself and you add all that stuff up on dji site you're looking at two thousand dollars plus tax here's a great tip for you go to ebay ebay was filled with dji avadas also mini 3 pros if uh you watch this video and you're like fpv is not for me the mini 3 pro is amazing i did a video on that both you can find on ebay in great condition i figured most people they'd get the avada and then they wouldn't want to put in the practice hours and they would end up selling and i think my hunch was correct i was able to get the avada the goggles 2 the fpv controller two extra batteries and d filters and two years of DJI's insurance for about 1500 US dollars, which is about $500 off of DJI's price. My unit also was brand new. So it truly was getting exactly what was on DJI's site for about $500 off. Next up, practice. Okay, so I went through all that and now I have the drone. Now let's learn to fly this thing. Typically, I'm someone who tosses out the instructions and I just learn from my mistakes, make some mistakes and figure it out. In this rare instance, I took most people's advice and I committed myself to at least five hours on the simulator before I attempted manual flight outside. 
I had no idea what I was getting into. After an hour on the sim, it felt hopeless. But I committed to doing 20 to 30 minutes a day, and after about six hours on the simulator, I was actually able to fly outdoors pretty well. I'm being serious, you have to start on the simulator if you wanna fly manual outside. Do not attempt just flying manual at first. Put in those hours and it will save you a lot of money and heartbreak, trust me. There's no way around the simulator. Everyone starts somewhere and even if you're an amazing FPV pilot, there was a day where you weren't and learning on a sim is definitely safer, it's just better in every way. Even with six hours on the sim, I still crash quite a bit and the Avada has held up remarkably well. Can you see that? Uh-oh, snap it back in. Hey, good is new, right? I know there's probably some pros out there that are like, this is not the toughest. Hey, for starting out, this is giving me everything I want. Nothing has broken yet, and I've crashed it hard over a dozen times. So here's a simulator as well as a first outdoor flight tip. Start in a wide open place, please. Either the level on the simulator or out in the field somewhere until you can control the drone without having to think which stick does what. That takes a little bit of time, like a couple hours or so, but then you'll have the muscle memory to move. Once you get that muscle memory, move to the smaller levels on the sim. It's really gonna challenge yourself to hone that control. So I started on the outdoor ones and then I immediately, once I kind of figured everything out, I moved to the parking garage. I was trying to dial in all of my movements much more. When you're ready for outdoors, absolutely go to a wide open massive field. This drone can get up to 60 miles per hour and it can get up there quickly. And wherever you're flying can feel really small. I stupidly started in my backyard and in just a few seconds, I was like five houses down <laughs> and I crashed and I still crash a lot. So please, Listen to what I'm saying. A couple things to keep in mind about crashing is that the battery does pop out sometimes. So don't think like, oh, it's got GPS, it's got a video signal, I'll be able to find it. Keep that in the back of your mind that if you take a hard crash, the battery can pop out. That's happened to me multiple times. Thankfully, I knew exactly where the drone was, went and got it. Another thing that can happen is when you crash, initially you'll have video feed and you're like, oh, I'll be able to find it. And then it goes into the low power state, which cuts the signal strength and the video will drop out on you. So the controller might be you know, able to communicate with it so you could do the ESC beeping to try to find it that way. But a lot of times you won't have video if there's something obstructing between your headset and the drone because it goes into that low power state when it crashes. Really anytime that it's not flying, it's in that low power state. So that is something to keep in mind for the noobs like me when you're out flying. This thing is so fun to fly and I definitely am hooked. I just can't wait to keep flying, charge batteries, keep going, and eventually to get into other FPV drones. Here are some more pros and cons so far. The drone is incredibly loud. I came from the Mini 3 Pro which was the exact opposite. It's incredibly quiet and discreet when flying. Oh my gosh. It's unbelievably quiet. Especially in this day and age with drones, people just are not super friendly towards them and this thing is so loud. The Avada could not be further on the other end of the spectrum. This thing sounds like a high-pitched leaf blower or vacuum, especially at high throttle. Even at 400 feet of altitude, I can still hear this drone easily, which is definitely not the case with the Mavics or the Minis. I kind of even have to get as far as a thousand feet away sometimes before I can't actually hear it, which is just nuts. You're likely going to disturb your neighbors and flying in public is going to give you issues. Another con, the fact that the bundle doesn't come with the FPV remote controller and it comes with that motion controller instead is just an absolute crime. DJI, please make some type of package that includes the controller. I understand that you think the motion controller is probably the future and it's going to be super intuitive and people are going to be able to use it and whatever. Most people want to learn on that controller, set up with the Avada, and unfortunately for DJI, they're probably going to want to build their own, switch to something else. It's so terrible that you cannot get the motion controller in a package and you have to buy it separate for $200. Another con, as I alluded 
alluded to earlier, the cost is just, it's really high. You can do better. There's far cheaper drones out there. They're just not gonna have like that total package with the crystal clear HD video in the goggles. So keep that in mind. This con is totally gonna be beating a YouTube dead horse, but the SD card slot is just awful to access. Maybe the way they design things, that's the only place that it could go. To me, it's actually not that big of a deal. I was kind of prepared because all the YouTubers were just harping on that thing, but SD card slot, not convenient. Now this isn't quite a full-blown con, but the video stabilization is just okay, I think. And you can turn it off and then fly like that. And then you can get the gyro data interlaced with the video. You can pull it into this third-party program and you can stabilize the footage in there. That's great. And the results are awesome. The workflow, just kind of unfortunate that you have to do that. It would be amazing if you could just kind of pull it off on your phone, get something that looks awesome go straight to social media, which I think most people are doing these days, but that is kind of a con. Now, this is not a con to me because I'm just starting out. I don't know anything about FPV at all. This is the only FPV drone I have ever flown, but according to a lot of the experienced FPV pilots, the performance of this versus the price just isn't great. You know, if you're buying a six or $700 FPV drone, you can probably do a lot better, but this drone, you don't have to worry about balancing batteries or any of that kind of stuff. It's all just in the package it does an amazing job it's very easy to hook everything up the batteries you just plug them in charge them you put them in the drone the drone lets you know hey the battery is getting low we need to auto land i know there are solutions outside of dji but dji just makes it so easy the drone also has a one axis gimbal which is excellent for beginners like myself so when you're starting out if you really don't want to go too too fast which i alluded to like the 60 miles an hour then keep that gimbal just looking dead forward and that does a good job because as you pitch forward to go, you'll start looking down and you'll kind of auto correct and slow down by pitching back and the drone will just slow down. If you raise that camera up, let's say 15, 20, 30 degrees, you can get going fast incredibly quickly. If you level the video feed with the horizon, you're gonna be shooting forward <laughs> like a rocket. I like that it has the gimbal. So as I get better, I can increase the angle at which the camera is looking. And that's been very helpful for me. I know you could manually do it, but also being able to do it on the fly is great as well. One other negative, and I understand this is super nitpicky because what DJI is trying to do is get give you the FPV view and also like GoPro footage. Cause on a traditional FPV drone, what you're gonna have is your video feed and then you'd strap a GoPro on it as well. And DJI is doing that both through one camera. So this saves weight and all kinds of stuff. But one of the drawbacks is that that camera switches ISO very quickly because it would be very dangerous for you to fly in something that's dark and the camera to like slowly give you maybe that like cinematic reveal. You wanna see what's in the dark as quickly as possible. So if you're going from like indoors or outdoors outdoors, you need to be able to see so that you don't crash. That's just kind of a con on the actual outputted video that you want to look at later. I mean, that is it's so nitpicky, but I just thought I would mention it. Now let's talk goggles. My face doesn't work well with the goggles. Very, I mean, I get a ton of light leak. Maybe I have a massive nose. Maybe my face is just weird. I'm waiting for some type of third party foam that's going to go around it that'll help seal that up. But I just get tons of light leak. I do like that the goggles have adjustments for your eye. So the goggles can be adjusted from negative eight all the way to plus two, like if you have glasses or something like that. And also you can adjust the spread, the distance, which is very nice. So spend some time really to dial those in because it'll help a lot. Make sure that you don't have any blurry areas on the screen. Use those adjustments. They're very handy. They work very well. So I like the customizability of those two lenses. I will also warn that those lenses will work in reverse and it will focus the sun on those screens and burn them out kind of like a magnifying glass on leaves or an, or an ant or something like that. So they have the cover that goes on those goggles and just whenever you're outside not using the goggles, get in the habit of putting that cover on, your future self will definitely thank you. I've had some trouble figuring out the video range. Sometimes it seems to work incredibly well and I can go a thousand feet away and it's still rock solid, HD, looks great. Other times I'm like super close by and I would just get a dropout. That's not super common. And again, it's probably my fault for not understanding this, but I had a pretty close call in Hawaii actually, was flying in a wide open mountainside and I'm just kind of like, 
zooming around and I just lost video feed. Now I thought I recovered perfectly because when I got video feedback, it was returning to home and everything. When I got home and analyzed the footage, I lost that video feed. It does not automatically go into return to home unless you lose the controller. So you should keep that finger on the pause button because once you put it in pause, it'll go into like the normal mode. It'll self-correct. It'll just hover there. It's awesome. But when I watched that video feed, the drone actually slammed into the ground, bounced off, and then I hit return to home and it came back home. I was close to maybe losing it i probably would have been able to find it but definitely learn from me fly when you're starting out with your finger on that pause button in case you lose that video feed because if you lose video you're done for in manual mode you're just totally done for so hit the pause the drone will hover and it'll just stay level, sit there until you give it its next command, and then you could hit return to home and it'll come back. Now, if you lose the actual controller between the drone, it should automatically go into return to home, but just letting you know. So along those same lines, a big tip, definitely for beginners, maybe not for the experienced people, but if you have multiple batteries, especially, and you're in a new spot, put the drone in normal mode or sport mode where it's not gonna fall out of the sky if you lose that video feed. Go around your new area as far as you think you would go just to test the video, just to say, hey, are there any spots where I might lose this? Don't just start flying like I did. That was such a dumb thing to do. Picture quality, is just stellar and the goggles have head tracking which is cool but i don't use it so like if you look to the right the drone could look to the right if you look down the drone could look down it's cool seems a little gimmicky maybe i don't know there might be people out there that that hate on that comment that absolutely love it in manual mode i just like to fly manual mode i can't even think about head tracking or, or anything like that and i think it only works with the motion controller they use the motion controller you could be flying around you could be kind of looking around seems kind of cool might be a little bit of a gimmick but they have that built in also the touch controls on the goggles super intuitive and work very well it also has built-in recording with an sd card slot you can record your feed whatever you're seeing in the goggles goggles also can be recorded as well. I do wish the battery for the goggles was a little bit bigger. It seems that I can get like a few flights out of it and then I need to charge it. It makes sense because it's like the fly more combo can accommodate three or four batteries on the charger. I'm thinking of buying an additional battery for the goggles just so that if one gets low, I can just switch it out. At the end of the day, I do love this thing. I'm a first time FEV pilot. The Avada has fulfilled basically all of my expectations and has kind of started me on the journey of FPV. I'm excited to keep flying and just to get better better and eventually try building my own FPV drone as well and installing their Air 3 unit so I can keep my goggles and keep my controller. One thing to keep in mind is remote ID. Currently, I haven't upgraded my firmware yet on the Avada, but if I do, then essentially the Avada is going to be required to have cell service whenever and wherever you're flying, which is a big bummer. So you like plug your phone into the goggles. There's nothing we can do about it at this point, but I figured I would just let you know. I hope this video was helpful. If you're thinking of getting into FPV, give it time, be patient, practice, practice, practice on a simulator and have just a ton of fun. Thanks so much for watching Break It Yourself. As always, don't forget to thumbs me up and we will see you next time. <laughs>